Part 9, welcome back. Let's kill this dude proper. So, we don't want him to just blink out of existence once his health runs out, so we will right click him, edit night, and down here on the event, any damage, once his health does drop below or equal to zero, instead of destroying the actor, we will set that he is in fact dead. And let's disconnect this and create a custom event called damaged and set that to this do once right here and off of false we will create another do once just for flow control and call that damaged function that way we don't have lines going all the way across the graph and getting into each other. And then we can move this down. And then there we go. Alright, now. After they are dead, then we want to set attacking player to false. Set has attacked player to false set moving to true only so it doesn't call our original patrolling function and character drag out the character movement set walk speed to zero uh, actually we will just disable movement yeah, disable movement, and then we will do a right click switch on int. Switch on int. And oop, hook that up off the selector, do a random int in range. We have four death animations for this character, so our range will be from 0 to 3, because arrays start at 0, so. Then we will add four of them, so 0, 1, 2, 3. Right click default, remove. Right click play animation on mesh. Control C that, control V. We're going to need four of them, so control V, control V, there we go. Hook them all up, boom, down, there we go. Make sure this mesh is hooked to the target on all of them. Uh, and then out here in the enemies night animations we'll go through and grab the flying back death select it in the browser just click it once go into the night BP hit this little arrow and it'll apply it directly to it you can click the drop down but it pulls in animations for other skeletons so it's easier to just select it out here by clicking it once and then go into it and set them up so I got one more sword and shield death there it is alright we will set that to that last one so when the health is zero we set that he is dead and he can't attack the player and has not attacked set the moving to true so it doesn't call our patrolling function and we'll disable movement so that he doesn't move around at all. And then we'll play an animation that should signify he died. So we'll test it real quick. And of course he's still going to rotate. So... Why is he trying to move to the player attack state? 
Let's see. Because I haven't set up to see. Alright, so in our attack state, at the very end, right before it calls the attack player thing again, we will hook up another branch to see if the guy's dead. Because if he is, we don't want him to do anything. Okay, that's set up. Set a branch at the end of this one to check to see if he's dead. If not, call that. When he fails... You know what, let's just drag off the on fail. We'll drag that all the way over here to this branch. And I hate the way that comes through. So double click, I'm going to drag it down like that. Double click. And I'm going to drag it over just to kind of have it running underneath. That way it'll check to see did it fail because he's dead? If it is, then not. If not, then go back to attacking the player. Now let's test it. There you go. Ugh, it was that simple. This is actually my second time recording this particular one because the first time through couldn't figure out why does he keep rotating to face me it was that simple I forgot to include that in the attack state so in the beginning but there we go now I got it set up so now he dies appropriately so we can section this off C damaged. So we know when he's damaged. Alright, well this one actually isn't that long. So let's set up a quick experience function too for our player. So in our player, right click edit player BP. We will create over here in the functions tab we will create a function called gain XP because as an RPG you want them to be able to level up. So we'll create one input of a, uh, let's call it XP to gain and make it a float. Wait. Yes, a float. Alright, so compile that and for the XP to gain we will set our current XP let's get our current XP plus this and we will set it to that. Now we want to check off of this one if it is greater than or equal to how much we need for our next level. And if with a branch if it is, then we will get our current XP and how much we need it for the next level and subtract them from each other because there's a chance this one could go over this one so it'll always fire if they're equal so it'll always go to at least zero but if this one is more than it then it'll set it to a number that we can then set our current XP to instead of just losing everything. So we will promote this to a local variable that is stored only in this function called difference. So if it is greater than the next level then we'll subtract to find the difference we will set our level by getting our level and adding one to it we will set no we will 
set our current XP. Set it over this way. Yeah. We'll increase the level by one, and then we will check to see if the current XP. We will set it to the difference. Set XP to difference, and find out if it is still greater than the next level. set next level. We need to upgrade that first. That's right. Sorry. We'll move that down out of the way. We will set the next level to get our next level plus times with shift eight. Float times float. I'm going to say times 1.5 drag off that, round, that way it returns a whole number and you don't have, like you need 38.98256 experience level or whatever. Set that to there. We will set the current XP to the difference and then find out if it's greater than or equal to our new value for our next level. And if so, then we will run our gain XP function. So if it is, then we'll loop back around. We'll just loop it like this. All the way back to over here. Uh, we can simplify this. Let's simplify it real quick. We'll just set the current XP to the difference and then loop it back. Because then we can check off of this one if the current XP is greater than the next level right there. So, Sorry, it's a little late. <laughs> we'll get there. My brain don't work right on a good day. We'll get there though. And that should double check everything and make sure it's all good. The level is default to one. It is. All right. So in our knight, we need to, after he plays his death animation, we want to call our player reference and call out our gain XP function. Hook it all, hook it up to all of these, because we want it to run off no matter what, um, no matter which animation it decides to play. Off of XP to gain, we will promote that to a variable called XP to give. And set that to what is the what is the level? Next level is at twenty. So, so I've only got one guy, let's set it to 25. Alright, now back in our HUD folder that we set up, the player HUD, right click to open, or double click to open that, drag out a text block, and you don't have to worry, this is just pro or debugging stuff, so we'll just go ahead and bind off of the text content, we will create a binding, drag out our player ref, do get level. This will just be to test to make sure everything's working the way it's supposed to. Back to the designer, drag out one more bind to current XP. Alright, 
designer one more text block that will be bound to what our next level is. So let's test it all out real quick. Click save all, save everything. So we're level one with zero XP and twenty to our next level. So let's kill this fella. And we're level two with five experience because we leveled up. So rock on. Let's just to test it out a little bit real quick. We will bring out multiple of these. You can you can create multiple of something by grabbing one of these after holding the alt on the keyboard. Hit alt and drag out and it will automatically create a duplicate. And for testing purposes, in my event graph for the player, I'm just... Oh, they can't die. Alright, I'm not going to worry about it. Let's let that bar go down. Alright, kill you. Level 2. Level 3. Level 3 still. Level 4. Now we've leveled up. Later on, we'll make it to where every time you level up, you get an ability point, and your stats will automatically go up. So, but that's it for this one. Now we got the guy dying right, and we're leveling up and getting experience from killing him. So, sweet. See you all in the next one.